All right, so here's the basic status of what happened when it quit on me the last little bit. <laughs> I'd gotten a piece of barbed wire wrapped up in the auger here. And <clears throat> between the auger and the bearing is where it wrapped up. And I think it wrapped up tight enough to force a, a gap and it popped the shaft out of the bearing. Well, there's a little lock collar that's supposed to be on there. But I can see right here where that bearing lock collar, where that lock collar slid from the set screw. And that rotation is enough to release the lock collar from the bearing. So there was force on here from the barbed wire that was forcing the bearing apart that was wrapped up in there so tight. So to get home, I might just lifted the auger on top of the bearing, raised the thing and drove it home. Now that it's a couple days later, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get it taken care of. The bearing's not damaged. Um, the seal is missing on the bearing, which is not ideal because that's gonna allow moisture and dirt and debris into the bearing. There's nothing left of the seal other than a small portion of the metal part that keeps it in place. I'm getting real tired of fixing this thing constantly, but that's just how it goes with this kind of a situation. There's a lot of factors involved. This one stretch of road that is always problematic for me is full, full of large cog stuff all along the edge of it. <clears throat> and the problem is that the road shape through there is more or less a trough. So there's no shoulder for it to just fall off. The, the thought being like the first time or two we clear snow, we can clear it with blades and push everything to the edges and everything's clear and good. But what actually happens when you're running a blade along is it's real easy to hook just a small portion of the rock and flip a big rock into place that would have been out of play to begin with. And now you've moved it and dislodged it and brought it into a position where it can be brought into the snow blower. The snowblower has a cutting blade on its own, so that tends to grab and catch things as well. And these side edges, there's just a lot of factors that way that I think the only way I could make sure that I didn't have that situation being the case is if the road had a legitimate road shape. It had a crown with a fall off shoulder and barrel pit to either side and all that kind of thing. And this road just, just simply isn't that. And I'm not convinced that it'll ever be that. There's no plan in the county development plan for that road to improve to that level at all. It's not even on the radar. So it would take a substantial amount for it to get there too. There's fences that would have to be moved, shaping, relocations, easement, permitting, all kinds of, all kinds of red tape and things in the way of trying to make this road so much better for that. And it's just not in the cards. It's not gonna be the case. So at best, I can just try to stay a little farther away from the edge, try not to get into where those rocks are and call it good. So I'm gonna get the bearing out of the pillow block, get it washed up, get the numbers off of it, and I'll get a hold of another bearing so that I have it here. I'm gonna put it back in. It's a, actually a very simple process to get, get it off and on. There's just two bolts that bolt the, bear, the pillow block bearing to the side and it comes forward, twist the lock collar and it slides right off the end. So it's not a complicated repair. So I am gonna put this bearing back on so that I can do some cleanup and, and do a little bit more finishing around the place. We had a bunch of wind the last, I don't know, couple of days after the storm blew out and it caused some drifting and a few things that way that just needs some cleanup really. So I'm gonna put it back together so I can use it for that while I wait for the new bearing. When the new bearing comes, I'll drop it in the pillow block, put it on and put it back to, to work and be in good shape. It was pretty cold outside, so the snow was very light and loose. So snow blowing this time wasn't a big deal. I did have to go through and get rid of the drifts and just cleared everything on our main driveways and it went pretty smoothly. The next day or two we were slated for a lot more snow to come our way so i wanted to make sure and get 
this bit of snow cleared up before the new snow came. So it only took me a couple of hours to make sure everything on our roads was opened up and cleaned up back to the shoulders. Then we just had to wait and see what the next storms was going to bring. Gonna kinda have our work cut out for us today. It snowed quite a bit. I don't know, six, maybe, six, maybe eight inches. It's pretty wet and heavy snow. And it's sunny and like 34 today. So that stuff's gonna turn into bad traction for the road. So we gotta get it cleared and make sure that we can get in and out of our driveway. I had to pull the snowblower off to feed the animals and stuff. So now before I put it back on, I'm just gonna go through things one more time again. I'm gonna lube the chain with some lithium grease spray so that it's got plenty of bound up grease on there to stay lubricated. Double check all the bolts and everything. The thing about these snow blowers, there's a lot of moving parts and they're constantly going at a lot of velocity. And in this kind of an application up here, when I put that thing to use, it's like four hours minimum, eight, 12 hours sometimes, and pretty consistent work. So there's just a lot of, a lot of factors in things getting loose, things wearing out, stuff like that. By no means is this thing anywhere close to new. It was used when I bought it. It was well used when I bought it. So I've done a lot of fixing, but all in all, it's minor comparatively. One thing I did notice when I was checking things out is that. <laughs> so initially I thought, oh crap, my bearings are going out on my impeller fan. But instead what I found is the gearbox bolts. I had three of the four in on the top and there's four more on the bottom. There's only one in there. So I had four of the total eight bolts remaining. The others just probably loosened slightly from vibration from use. Didn't catch that they had gotten loose, vibrated out. So again, not a big deal. <laughs> I'm not worried about any of this. This thing is still like worth its weight in gold compared to trying to deal with all this snow and not have any way to get it up and off the shoulder. So anyway, we're gonna fix up a couple of things quickly this morning, make sure everything else is tight and good, lubricate everything one more time, and then get it mounted back onto the tractor and get out there and get clearing the roads in the sun.
a lot of people comment about, oh, you need a cab on that tractor and stuff. And, you know, it's just not that uncomfortable for that long. Long term, sure, yeah, I'd love to get a cab and have a cab tractor, but it's in the list. But, you know, they don't just come for free. And I don't want to try to cobble some stuff together and make some kind of makeshift cab or anything like that. I've dealt with aftermarket cabs before on tractors and they just, they're garbage, they're junk in my opinion. They just, they're always in the way of things. They, they never fit well enough to be worth it. Even these soft cabs, they're just garbage in my opinion. I don't feel like they last and they snap and zip into place and all this crap. And they just, you're doing good if you get it through a season without having something break or tear apart or it's just not worth the effort. Really, that's what it comes down to. All those things that could be done are just not worth the effort. It's not that uncomfortable. I got really good weather gear. And if my insulated coveries and my coat and my goggles aren't enough, I got a full set of snow machine gear. And heck that, you can go out and spend 12 hours literally in the snow for the whole day and feel comfortable. So it's just not big enough concern for me. I don't mind being a little bit uncomfortable at times. I think it's good for you. It's actually decent. I'm just in my jacket, I'm not even wearing gloves because it's that kind of okay. So ain't a big deal. Holy cow, <laughs> that's a lot of bolts all of a sudden. The snow's so heavy and dense that it just keeps wanting to shear that drive sprocket bolt. I checked my slip clutch and it is slipping periodically. 
because I marked it and it's moving. I think what's happening though is that there's so much inertia from that fan going like crazy trying to eject everything that when it binds up enough on that auger there's just not enough give between the two and the inertia of that fan is just hard enough to pop that through bolt so anyway we're just trying to get through it at this point i hit that big old rock down there the last time the road was cleared there it was with a plow and that put another rock into position i've cleaned that spot five times with the snowblower this year with no issues these rocks just get found and buried in the pile of snow it's just how it goes i'm making about two to two and a half miles an hour down the main road there and it's about two and a half miles to the bottom so i expect you know another two and a half hours three hours anyway i'm just gonna make a pass down and back so the roads open down the main space we'll call that good for today and see we're supposed to have some spotty hot weather for the next couple of days so we'll just see what it does okay here's the situation <laughs> i burned through like five bolts today i burned through every bolt i had for that sprocket i've been putting grade eight bolts in there because that's what i bought when i put it together originally and grade eight bolts are much much stronger in tensile strength i don't know what their shear bolt rating is but because they're harder they will fracture rather than distort i'm fairly convinced that what's happening is in the moment of impact of this auger getting more force stopping it against all the inertia going it's creating a an impact fracture on the bolt i probably need to go down to a grade five or grade three on that bolt and it'll probably resolve everything i'm all out of bolts i do not want to go into town tonight try to get some more what i do have is some quarter inch cold roll i am going to line that up stuff this quarter inch cold roll through it and bend it over and let it ride in there i'm going to take another one with me this is much much softer and should allow it to take a little bit of impact and distort a little bit while everything else slows down to catch up to the slip clutch so that's what we're going to do
Well, we didn't make it, <laughs> but that's okay. It's just how that goes. The cold rolled bar that I put in the sprocket worked good until it got to a real heavy load. This stuff is so heavy dense that may as well be a thousand rocks that it's trying to chew through. At the end there, I just had to keep going because if I back away, there's this huge mound of snow that's hard and wet and dense. And I'm like, I can't leave that in the skinny part of the road. So I had to push it to the wide spot where I could push it off the road and just get it there. It's less than ideal because that just packs up in the auger of the snowblower. But at that point it was already packed up anyway, so it didn't really matter. So Ola backed up and got out of the way enough, got to the wide spot. and I was able to push it off and get back up here. Dug it out and it's ready to go in the shop and get thawed out for the night. And tomorrow I'll probably go get some bolts. 10 hours of struggle up here is well worth 10 minutes of that view. Real quickly forget all the struggle today and you don't care. 